Hi, hello, how are you? Shall we study Bible together? Uh, before we study, shall we pray? Father in heaven, please teach us your word. Thank you. Just now pray. Amen. Well, we have been studying uh, the book of Exodus, and now today there are, we're going to study from the chapter 19 of the book of Exodus. Some people said that Exodus, you can kind of, uh, uh, kind of uh, separate in two parts. And the first part of the Exodus is about the God saving Israeli from the Egypt, and uh, they uh, they leave from Egypt. Now the second part is actually it is uh, God gave the law, and it's called Mosaic Covenant to the Israel. So the chapter 19 for many people uh, say that from chapter 19 it is the second half. Of the book of Exodus, because from chapter 19, that we're gonna have, we're gonna totally shift the uh, the story from the uh, uh, exiting the, uh, from the uh, Egypt. Now is actually uh, God going to gave the law to the Israel. Now shall we read from the uh, chapter 19, the verse one in, in the Exodus? Uh, let me read. In the third month, after the Israeli went out from the land of Egypt, on the very day, they came to the desert of Sinai. After they journeyed from Rephidim, they came to the desert of Sinai, and they camped in the desert. Israel camped there in the front of the mountains. Now, uh, the verse uh, 2 indicate the Israeli uh, they camped at the front of the mountain, and that mountain is uh, uh, the Sinai. The mount, uh, they're called the uh, Mount of Sinai. Now, what is this? Is uh, uh, they said it was uh, three months after they left Egypt. So the time they left Egypt was uh, April, and the God told them to start the new calendar, new months start from the, their uh, exit of the Egypt. So that is uh, uh, the first month. And then three months later, is somewhere around July in our calendar now, that they are now finally came to the, uh, the, uh, the, the bottom part of the Mount Sinai. And that's where they are. And then from here, their uh, story totally changed from the uh, uh, from the exile from the uh, Egypt, I mean, uh, escaping from Egypt, and that story kind of ended here. And then now from the chapter 19, the Israel are going to stay the uh, the at the mountains nearby mountains for next 11 months, and that is a long time. Uh, from this particular chapter, chapter 19 of Book of Exodus, until. The, uh, the number chapter 10 verse 11 the Israeli going to stay in this location uh, from here to the uh, in a you know Bible the from here to uh, numbers chapter 10 that is almost like a there's like a 57 chapters uh, the Israel going to stay this particular location the Bible is actually uh, talking about all the things about the gods gave them the law. Uh, through the Moses, and uh, that's what we're going to study. That is the beginning of the new, really, uh, new, how I say, like a uh, history of the Israel, or actually history of the human, of, of with the God. God is now revealed the, uh, his, uh, about himself, about his law and his righteousness, and now we're going to study about that. And so that is a very significant. Now, uh, where's the location of the Mount Sinai? They actually, uh, there's several different uh, theory, but in the one uh, place, uh, there are the two major ones. Uh, uh, the one is, uh, uh, if you look at the map here, and uh, it, this is the traditional place. Uh, it's called Mount, uh, uh, they, 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 where the Mount Sinai uh, is. Uh, this particular place is called Jebel Musa, and uh, if you look at the picture here, uh, that is a picture of the Jebel Musa. And on the right next to that mountains, uh, there is a monastery. Uh, it's called Monastery of Saint uh, Catherine, and so uh, that is the uh, traditionally people believe that is a location of the Mount Sinai. Uh, now, however, there is one other location 
the now uh, uh, people start to think that it could uh, another location is uh, more likely the Mount Sinai, and that's another second place that people start saying is actually came from Bible. Um, if you carefully read the Bible, uh, Bible seems to indicate where the Mount Sinai is, and that is from the uh, New Testament uh, book of Galatians, chapter 4. Verse 25 uh, it's described where the Mount Sinai was and uh, is. And let me read that uh, Galatians chapter 4, verse 25. Now, Hagar represents Mount Sinai in Arabia and correspond to the present Jerusalem, for she is a slavery with her children. Uh, now, that particular statement in the Galatians uh, described the Mount Sinai was in uh, Arabia. Now where is Arabia? Arabia is, if you look at the, this uh, another uh, map here, um, now this part here is uh, uh, the Sinai Peninsula and that's where traditionally people believe that uh, Mount Sinai is. However, this side, the kind of this big part, that is uh, uh, Arabia. And the way you see this uh, blue dot here, and that is uh, second uh, particular uh, second potential location for Mount Sinai. Uh, if you look at the picture of this particular location, there is a mountains uh, that looks like that, and uh, also uh, right uh, uh, nearby there, there is uh, a rock uh, it's a split in half, and that rock is possibly people think that is a rock of uh, Horeb. That is where the Moses struck and the rock uh, uh, broke in half and the water gushed out from that rock. So uh, this particular location is the second possible location uh, that uh, some people start, to, some scholar start to believe that this is uh, Mount si real Mount Sinai. Now we don't know exactly where is Mount Sinai is but either locations uh, the God uh, came to uh, uh, mountains and uh, uh, I mean uh, Mount Sinai and now God is going to give the uh, law to the uh, uh, people in Israel. Uh, now uh, book of Exodus is absolutely significant book because from this book that God uh, has revealed to us uh, about himself uh, about who he, I mean, uh, who he is and his name and his plan. And so this is a very significant uh, location that where the God himself revealed to us who he is. And um, as, as a fact, uh, this is a place that is really uh, changed the history of humankind. Now, let me read, uh, continue to read the book of Exodus chapter 19. Uh, now, next verse is uh, uh, 3. Um, yeah, uh, chapter, uh, the, chapter 19, verse 3 and 4. Let me read that. Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountains, Thus you will tell the house of Jacob, and declare to the people of Israel, You yourself have seen what I did to Egypt, and how I left you on the eagle's wings, and brought you to myself. Now here, the uh, God apparently is uh, on a, somewhere in the mountains or top of the mountains and God uh, asked Moses to come up to the mountain and God spoke to Moses. And what God told Moses on that mountain is that, uh, you know, you, have, you guys have seen that all the miracles that God has performed, especially God saved them from the, uh, Egypt and uh, under the slavery and God is the one brought them out from the Egypt and also God said that to Moses that uh, God put the Israel uh, under the, uh, the his wing like an eagle's wing now that actually kind of uh, signify that God took care of them uh, as a fact that God gave them water and God gave them uh, food the bread and the meat for them to survive so what's God telling the Moses saying that uh, on, on these mountains, I brought you guys here to these mountains and uh, you guys have seen all the miracles so far and not only that, you have seen the uh, protection that God gave to Israel. Now this is really significant statement. Actually, 
when you look at when I look at my own life, indeed God has saved me and God has really protected me and provide everything I needed until this point. So uh, God is really the faithful God. So God kind of remind the Moses that his faithfulness towards Israel. And now the uh, next statement after God told Moses, I am the God who really protecting you, giving you all the things you need. I'm going to give you very significant statement. Now from the chapter 19 verse 5 and 6 for some people this would be like a hub of the Bible. Some people it's a state some people believe that chapter 19 verse 5 and 6 is one of the most significant part of the Bible because from that uh, chapter I mean a verse we find out that God's significant plan on uh, our us the human beings that uh, you know, Book of Exodus, as I mentioned before, that really uh, uh, taught us a lot about God, who God is, His plan. Now, this is a really first time He revealed to us His ultimate plan about how to save people. And this is a very important verse for not only history of Israel, but also history of us, uh, the entire human uh, kind. Now, let me read. This is a very important verse, uh, the chapter 19, verse 5 and 6. Uh, this is where the God's plan is being uh, revealed. Let me read that part. And now, if you will diligently listen to me and keep my covenant, then you will be my special position out of all the nations, for all the earth is mine, and you will be to me a kingdom of priests and holy nations. These are the words that you will speak to the Israeli. Uh, what the God told Moses is that he's now going to uh, give them a covenant and uh, well, a promise or whatever you want to call covenant. And if you keep this covenant, then you will be like uh, your special nation for us, for me, and you will be the nation of the priest and uh, through your, your through you that God going to reveal his glory and uh, uh, so you 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 you're gonna keep this covenant and this is a very significant uh, statement because what the God is really telling Moses is that Moses I'm going to make the covenant with you now many of you probably uh, remember that this is not the first time that God uh, made promise with uh, human, uh, but uh, that uh, you probably know the one significant promise uh, God made with uh, Abraham before this po this uh, this time. Now, the Abraham covenant was that God told Abraham that I'm going to bless the entire earth, uh, people, the nations through your descendant. Now that is a really uh, you know that uh, really uh, like a blessing that God gave unconditional blessing that God gave to Abraham and now however in concerning about Moses covenant this is a conditional God told Moses that I'm gonna tell you the covenant I'm gonna make a covenant with you um, your people but if you keep the covenant then you will be the uh, uh, the nation of the priest and the uh, special nation for me. Uh, this is very interesting because this is a conditional covenant God made, uh, you know, covenant with uh, people in Israel, and also uh, the this is actually indications that God is going to make the uh, Israel the special nation. And not only that, they will become the nation of a priest. Now, the priest is really special people. They are more like a kind of between God and the ordinary people. Uh, from God's viewpoint, the priest is a represent the uh, us human, and from the the people's viewpoint, the uh, priest is kind of represent God. So, the God is actually telling Israel that you will be like a priest, nation of the priest. Uh, you will be the special people that God picked and from now on. But it is under one condition. 
and that is if you keep the covenant I'm going to give to you um, now what it's actually telling here is that God is now going to reveal that his righteousness which means God is going to tell us his law what is a law now it's actually it is a, from God's viewpoint what is right and what is wrong and so God going to tell us I'm going to give you a law I'm going to give you a, a law for you to keep if you keep the, this commandment then you will be the nation priest you will be a special you will be able to represent me and that's what the God telling uh, Moses and now here uh, this is actually if you look at the more in a broader uh, term is God is actually going to treat the Israel as what us human supposed to be when God create us the uh, God is actually uh, we are supposed to live under the God's righteousness under the God's law but as you remember that because of Adam uh, that we are now no longer uh, uh, under the uh, no longer able to keep God's law because we become very sinful being um, now God going to give two things to Israel here the one is a law and other one is a temple now if you look at here this uh, chart here God going to give, give them law that is actually God going to reveal uh, his righteousness this is going to teach us that uh, what is right and what is wrong and we're supposed to live under the uh, uh, God's righteousness this is actually demand the obedient for us that we will be obedient to God's righteousness and also God gave them temple uh, now temple is actually regain the God's presence and uh, uh, do you remember that uh, when God made uh, Adam I mean us that God's intention was we to live according to his righteousness and also we are supposed to live with God God is always presence and uh, with us in our life and that is a really what the humans are made to live under the God's righteousness and also be with God and now God is going to give the law and temple to Israel and God saying God is going to treat the Israel like what the people are supposed to be and God is telling the Israel if you can keep this law you will be a special nation you become a nation of a priest you actually represent God to people and the entire uh, people in the world will see that and realize there is a true real God um, now what's so significant is that uh, even though God going to give law and temple that we know from the New Testament that God knew already that Israel not able to uh, be obedient with God's law. Now, some will be very surprised. You know, I, I, we know the history that Israel uh, they couldn't keep up the law, but however, uh, mighty God, He already knew this. And uh, but then, why He gave the law? Now we have uh, answer in the New Testament the why God gave law, God's righteousness, which He knows that Israel cannot keep up. That, in a, that reason was revealed to us in the Galatians chapter 3 verse 19 why the law was given to people in Israel let, let me read that part Galatians chapter 3 verse 19 why then was the law given it was added because of transgressions until the arrival of the descendants to whom the promise had been made it was ad administrated through the angel by the intermediary. Now, what the Galatians chapter 3 verse 19 revealed to us is so significant. God gave the law to Israel. God gave the, what is ri his righteousness, what is, what is right to his viewpoint, what is supposed to be uh, uh, the, us to follow. The God's righteousness was revealed through his law. Uh, but he knows that people Israel cannot keep up with it 
and the Lord giving for transgression. So they, they, they cannot keep it. So they have to come to God every year for forgiveness. We, will, we did our best to follow your law, but then we couldn't do it. Now God gave them a temple so that they can bring the sacrifice every year to really uh, confiscate or like uh, uh, atone their sin. And uh, every year, that's a reminder for the people of Israel that, uh, and also us human that when we try to be like, uh, we try to live God's righteousness, we can't because we're so sinful and uh, we will, we'll, we're not able to keep up this law. That's why we need sacrifice uh, to really uh, uh, erase our uh, uh, transgressions, uh, erase our uh, uh, the unclean part of us. And this is really indication that uh, it is necessary until Jesus comes, uh, that Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice for us. God has already revealed to us His great plan in the verse 5 and 6 that I'm going to treat you, I'm going to give you a law, and I'm going to treat you like a, a, a priest nation if you can keep this law. But God knows that they can't. And God also knows that it is a real, uh, us to realize that the only way for us to be saved, uh, be with God, is necess uh, we need the uh, sacrificial lamb, which is eventually the Jesus. And when uh, the Jesus came, and sacrifice himself to the cross, uh, then the Mosaic law has been completed. Uh, Mosaic law is not erased or gone, it's actually Jesus actually fulfilled the law. And so that is a very important significant part. And uh, let's move on to uh, verse 7 and 8 because now that without listening God's command, that somehow Israel people thought that it's very easy to be obedient with God's law. Um, now, uh, they, they, they have not heard what the God is going to say. But they, when the, uh, Moses come down to the mountain and told them, hey, but uh, everyone, the God said, if you be obedient to God's law, uh, you will become a priest nation. And people in Israel say, oh, okay, that's easy, we can do it. And that's how they're going to answer. Uh, let me read in the verse 7 and 8. So Moses came and summoned the elder of Israel. He set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. And all the people answered together, All that the Lord has commanded, we will do. So Moses brought the words of the people back to the Lord. Now, uh, you have to understand in this point, uh, people in Israel, they have not heard God's commandment yet. But all they heard was, you know, God told them, you have to be obedient uh, to uh, what I'm going to say. And they say, oh, that's easy. All, I have to do, all we have to do is just be obedient to what God said. Uh, they thought that's a piece of a cake to do that. Now, that is very much the how we Christians often respond, uh, especially the person who just become a Christian, they, uh, they think, oh, I, I've been saved by the uh, blood of Jesus Christ, I've been cleansed. From now on, I'm going to church every Sunday, and I'll be a super Christian, and I'll be a, uh, I'm not going to commit any more sin. That is a, sometimes even the Christians say that. It's easy. All we have to do is follow God, come to church every Sunday. But the fact is that the Bible also revealed to us that we are totally correct. Indeed, indeed, we are cleansed by God, uh, Jesus' blood. From God's viewpoint, we are considered to be righteous. But in the bottom line, we are so uh, sinful. And uh, it, is, it is a realization that uh, we need the constant forgiveness from God. And um, uh, that's why even the Christian, we had to come to the God in uh, our Lord's Prayer. Oh Lord, please forgive us. We have already forgiven others. Please forgive our transgression, our sin. And uh, that is a reminder to us that we are not much different from Israel. Now Israel is going to be treated like a, a nation priest. Now the Christian 
is uh, treated like a priest to God and we have a same place we have to realize that we are totally corrupt sinful being and without Jesus blood we couldn't be saved this exact point that uh, when Jesus came to the Jerusalem the first thing Jesus told Israel people is uh, uh, their, uh, their, their, uh, is, uh, Jesus told them to the people in the Pharisee, they think they are following the God's law diligently and they are right but in the fact is they are sinful as uh, from God's viewpoint they are away from the God's righteousness God knows that his righteousness is way above way holier than what the human can even think of and uh, that is a really uh, 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 that's where we are but in the people in Israel this time that they think it's easy to follow God's law. So they will say to the Lord, okay, we're going to be obedient to you. That's a piece of cake. And that's how they're going to reply. Now, let's see how God responds to Israel in verse 9 and 10. The Lord said to Moses, I am going to come to you in the dense crowd so that the people may hear when I speak with you and so that they will answer, uh, they will always believe in you. And Moses told the words of the people to the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow and make them wash their clothes. Now what God said to Moses saying that even though Moses told God, Hey, uh, all the people say, Okay, they're going to follow you. Then what God told uh, Moses, Okay, I'm coming down and so that they can hear, I'm going to talk to you, but they can hear my voice also and uh, they're going to believe you, Moses. And uh, not only that, you got to sanctify them. I I'm going to give you three days and they have to be cleansed. They have to be, uh, uh, how is it, holy. Now, only holy person are allowed to see God. The person without any sin is the only person can approach to God uh, that we are not able to see God without with our own merit without Jesus blood we are so uh, how I say corrupt uh, we are unclean and uh, no way we can come to God so God told Moses I'll come down and come closer to the people now people have to be cleansed and they have to sanctify for I'm gonna give you three days let them wash their clothes and this is very very interesting uh, let's see what happens after this in verse 11 and 12 and be ready for the third day for on the third day the Lord will come down on the Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people you must set boundary for the people all around said Take heed to yourself not to go up uh, the mountains nor touch the edge. Whoever touches the mountain will surely be put to death. Now what the God telling Moses say, I'm coming down. But, you know, and I'm going to give three days for you to be uh, cleansed. And uh, only holy person can come. But then uh, even, even they cleanse, they're not still holy enough to touch me. So when God comes, there will be a boundary. And if anybody cross the boundary, they will be put to death. <laughs> that is an amazing statement. Um, you know, poor Israeli people didn't thought that just to receive God's command, uh, they didn't know how holy they had to be. They, they, they realized that it is amazing things that God, now God is going to reveal His righteousness, His standard, His law to them, and God ask them to prepare uh, by cleanse but even they cleansed uh, wash their clothes uh, they cannot come closer to God if whoever come closer to God or uh, a closer boundary they will be put to death and that is uh, how uh, God told Moses to tell Israeli people to be prepared for three days to be cleansed and let's see what happened after this God continued to tell Moses no no hand will touch him but he will surely be stoned or sh uh, uh, shot through uh, whether a beast or a human beings he must not live when the ram's horn sound a long blast 
they may go up on the mountains. Now, we just read a very strange statement, don't you think? Because God told them, like, whoever touched these mountains or come closer to God, even there the humans or animals, they will be put to death. You cannot come closer to God because you are not holy, cleansed. And, uh, but however, if you hear the sound of horn, sound of like a trumpet, uh, for long horn, like a boop, then you may allow to come. What? What, what happened? I mean, in a, in a, God just told Moses that they cannot come to mountains and you have to prepare for three days, cleanse your clothes, you gotta be holy, you have to be sanctified, even hear God's word, and let alone come to God, you will die, you will dead, you will be put to death. But the exception is when you hear the trumpet sound or sound of horn, um, you may come up to the mountains. Now, what's happening here? Now, this is clear indication is the only way we can come to God is when God allows us to come. God is a, the, the trumpet sound is indication is God is calling us. God is giving us a permission to come closer to Him. Uh, it is not our how I say, uh, uh, merit that we can go, go closer to God, no one boasts and say, God, say, I'm a holy man, you know, I did all the wonderful work, now I have a right to see you. No one can say that. Uh, no one can be uh, uh, clean, clean enough to be able to see God himself and his own merit, except when God allowed them. Now, this is exactly the same uh, scene as uh, this is same in our Christian too, when Jesus will come down uh, second time, uh, that you we will hear the trumpet sound, and that's that's a signified us Christian we can come up to meet him. Now, if you look there at the time of the uh, uh, rapture, that Jesus will come down, and you will hear the trumpet sound as well. This is the indication. It's the only way we can go and meet Jesus is actually God is the one calling us, not the us, uh, uh, our merit. Uh, let me read uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 6 and 17. This scene is very similar to the when God come down on the Mount Sinai to meet the people. Uh, let me read the 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 6 and 17. This is actually uh, how the uh, rapture will, will take place. For the Lord himself will come down from the heaven with the shout of the command with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be suddenly caught up together with them in the crowd to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Now the first Thessalonians uh, describe about how the rapture will take place. Uh, the God coming down, just like what here, the God coming down to the Mount Sinai. The only cleansed people uh, even allowed to hear the God's voice. And uh, but in the, when God said that the, when you hear the sound of trumpet, sound of horn, then you can come closer to God. And that is exactly what will happen at the time of the rapture. Uh, no, no one, even the Christians, uh, that we are not good enough to see God except God calling us to see Him and with the sound of trumpet that is a reminder to us it is not the, our merit that we can see God it is actually what Jesus did and die on the cross only through the, uh, His death and resurrection we are allowed to see God and this is the amazing grace that uh, we have to realize now it's really going to meet God and uh, uh, let me continue in the verse uh, 14 and 15. Then Moses went down from the mountain to the people and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. He said to the people, Be ready for the third day. Do not approach your wives for the marital uh, relations. Uh, now, Moses, after he heard of God, that, uh, he went, he, Moses went down 
to the from the mountain and then he start to cleanse people and sanctify people and ask them to wash their clothes and you have to you have to be cleansed you have to be sanctified and Moses told them uh, maybe you shouldn't uh, you know have a relationship with your wife now that is God didn't say that actually it's Moses <laughs> you know Bible say uh, you know the marital relationship with your wife uh, is a uh, it is not sin it is permitted but in, according to uh, but Moses probably thought that hey God asked us to be uh, uh, holy and so you know maybe you shouldn't touch your wife for uh, these three days but somehow uh, this is the point that uh, God prepared them to hear that God's law now God going to give them the, his righteousness his law and also the temple is a remind them that uh, they cannot keep up with the law and uh, uh, eventually they have to bring the sacrifice at the temple uh, temple is starting with the worship of God now this situation that God put Israel his great plan of salvation it's exactly the same uh, situation as we are right now with, uh, uh, with Jesus uh, the, for Christian we are saved Jesus became ultimate sacrifice for us and as you believe in Jesus you are cleansed according to God's viewpoint and uh, we are concerned every Christians are concerned to be priests now what happened to the temple uh, now Christians are temple and our physical body is now the temple of Holy Spirit and that's why when the Christian come together now word church is actually come together or the crowd or people uh, are together the, as the temples of Christian come together that is a place for place for worship uh, the, the, the time of Israel uh, before Jesus come the God actually provide them the real temple and that's where they supposed to worship God and uh, they had to realize God's presence and they, at the same time they had to bring the sacrifice every year to really ask God's forgiveness and to remind them they need uh, sacrifice able to cleanse their, their, uh, the transgression that they couldn't really keep up with uh, uh, God's righteousness now God's righteousness is so holy that even you know Jesus remind the Israel that even you even thought that even thought that uh, about uh, some kind of a uh, dirty thought about the uh, uh, you know other sex uh, then that's it's better for you to gouge out your eyes than going to hell um, you know even 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 the uh, Ten Commandment one of the Ten Commandment that you should not uh, covet you should not want you should not have feeling of the want, wanting your neighbor's position but then let me ask you the, how many of you uh, thought like oh I like to live in such a wonderful big mansions oh I wish I have like to have this car that he's, he's driving that alone is not good enough see the God's holiness God's law the covenant is way higher standard than what we can even think of every human beings is way short of his glory way way short of and then God actually going to give them Ten Commandments God going to reveal his righteousness uh, his law and then uh, God knows that they cannot keep up with it and God provide them a temple and for them to really uh, bring the sacrifice to the temple is a remind them that they need the sacrificial lamb for them to be saved uh, now questions I have to you here is uh, uh, now God reveal his great plan here that God is going to uh, 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 give you uh, uh, his righteousness his righteousness way high above that no one can be saved except the people who believe in that Jesus as your Savior and uh, people who accept that Jesus became your ultimate sacrifice for your transgressions and uh, people who believe that Jesus resurrected to indicate that uh, his resurrection his power is a truth the people who believe in Jesus as your personal Savior then that's the only way you can come to God because no one can even come closer to God with his own merit uh, shall we pray Father, thank you that you reveal to us through the book of Exodus 
that your righteousness and no one can come to you except people who believe in Jesus, people who have been cleansed by blood of Jesus and Lord thank you that you gave us this teaching through the book of Exodus here. Thank you. Just in prayer. Amen. Alright, you take care. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.